Hello everybody and welcome to Uprising again where today we're going to talk about bacteria. Bacteria is really, in my opinion, a very vague term because it really throws that word into just one giant box and the truth is we don't really know a lot about it. There's a lot of new research in Japan. I want to start with this research that they're doing in Japan because they're doing some crazy things. They're literally taking people who seem to just be immune to certain diseases and then they'll take somebody else who has one of these diseases or conditions and then they'll take bacteria out of the person's colon that is healthy and they will go through a process of cleaning it up of course and then they'll put it into the other person and it's curing these people I mean it is absolutely nuts a lot of people don't understand what's really going on in the gut I mean we're talking like 75 80 percent of your immune system is in your gut there seems to be a place in there that's also responsible for creating even your blood it's just wild we actually have more gut bacteria than we have cells in our body. I believe the ratio is like 10 to 1. So there's something really crazy going on. But then I read some really wild research showing that there might be a strong correlation between 75% of tumors and cancer from a Japanese scientist related to bacteria. And it really made me think a lot because I'm always thinking about diet and how the body works because it's such a magnificent thing. It makes me think about, of course, the food we eat because everything that goes into our mouth eventually ends up, obviously it goes through our stomach and our colon and, and all that good stuff, but it also ends up in our bloodstream. And so when I see something like a pile of meat, I know that a lot of people have arguments about eating meat and not eating meat, and I'm not going to get into that. All I know is that when I see a pile of meat and I put it on the ground and I let it sit there and I'll go out there days later there's maggots growing on it and I know again for example if I take some poultry some chicken and I put it on a cutting board and I cut it and I'm gonna put it in a boiling pot of water to cook it or whatever that cutting board I can't put all of a sudden some vegetable and use that same knife and cut it because I'm running the risk of getting something like salmonella or something that's gonna make me deathly sick. I've actually seen it happen to some friends of mine and it's terrible and they feel like they're gonna die. And then you're putting that in your body. So it's really kind of crazy. And, and when I observe a lot of the Japanese diet and I observe them because I've lived there for many years and I see the way that they eat, of course, they have incredibly healthy people that live very long lives, even though I've seen them smoke like chimneys, have so much stress and work so much and be so dedicated. They're very interesting people, but their culture, the way they eat, they eat large amounts of vegetables. And if they, and of course they have their rice, but if they have some meat, if and when they do, it's a small portion. It's the same thing with fish. Now I'm not even saying that meat and fish is just okay and the right thing to do. I'm not saying that it is or isn't. It's just that based on the logic, it appears that a lot of the parasites also found in fish and meat and the bacteria might actually, there might be some validity to this. But the research that they're doing on the colon and the bacteria is really interesting in how they're actually curing diseases with it. And of course, there's also science showing that your bacteria is responsible for the majority of the hydrogen that your body makes. Your body actually makes its own hydrogen. And this is also really important. I actually just personally believe that we end up not being able to make enough. So when we substitute it with like drinking dissolved, you know, hydrogen water, hydrogen that is dissolved in the water, it really helps us out. It's like being deficient in a certain vitamin, maybe like vitamin D that you simply get from the sun, but it really helps out the normal process of the body. There's also science, and I believe this one's from the U.S., and that our bacteria in our colon, there's so much that they don't know. But what they've recently come to know is that these bacteria in the colon feed off of certain fibers. And in one of these interesting studies, they thought, oh, okay, so they, so they eat fiber. So let's just put more fiber in your diet. But see, this is where one of these vague terms comes up. It's like, oh, it's just bacteria. Oh, it's just fiber. But it didn't really work out because when they put that fiber in, these bacteria were not all feeding on it and weren't able to carry out the processes that they were supposed to. 
So what they ended up finding out was when you get the fiber from, let's say, a pepper or the fiber from an apple or a carrot or any fruit and vegetable and some grains too, when you take certain fibers in from different foods, different bacteria will actually eat it and carry out the process that they're supposed to carry. And if you don't feed them properly, then it gets really crazy because they're all along your, you know, your colon and basically in, inside of you. And if they don't eat properly, they will move and they will move to areas where they have to get food. The problem is, is that once they move and they go to areas where they don't really belong, they start causing issues. So it gets really, really complex. But in my opinion, you can simplify your lifestyle and actually improve the whole thing. I mean, it doesn't have to be complex. It really doesn't have to be that way. We just, all we, all we want in my opinion, is just give me the answer. Just tell me what I'm supposed to do so that I can be healthy. And so, for example, these are some of the simple things that I've personally come up with. Obviously, one of them is when I first wake up in the morning, I don't know how you, how many of you notice, but you're dehydrated. I mean, you're dehydrated in the morning. First thing I do before I fill up my stomach with food, because you don't want to drink water when you have food in your stomach. This is one thing that I've noticed about people, and it's really fascinating. I've seen people sit down and eat a meal, then they start feeling thirsty. They're feeling thirsty for a reason. Then they go put water in them and they have food in their stomach, which is trying to be broken down by stomach acid. And then you dilute it with water. That's not what you should do. You should put a decent amount of water in you first, get hydrated because your colon requires actually a lot of water to digest your food. And then maybe wait 20 minutes and then go, go eat your meal. And then I think you're going to feel a lot better. You're going to notice a difference. Just try it and you will notice a difference simply by the way you feel. It's really that simple. And so anyway, um, I'm trying to remember where I was at now. But the point is the gut bacteria is really, really important. And if you can stay really hydrated when you're on an empty stomach again, like in the morning, and then when, when I go to have my breakfast, instead of having, you know, bacon and eggs and, you know, a big toast with, you know, a bunch of jam that is filled with, you know, high fructose corn syrup or some type of sugar, these things aren't really going to help us as far as our colon health, which eventually I believe is going to affect our overall health. I mean, even with babies, you know, their gut, there's so much new research about gut bacteria and babies, you know, whether they're getting it from the umbilical cord, whether they get it from colostrum, whether they just get it in, in other forms. There's even uh, new research showing that there's actual bacteria in the amniotic fluid when once before they thought there wasn't. There's just so much that we don't know. And so to try to simplify a lifestyle that is going to be beneficial for us to be healthy, such as I'll, I'll just tell you some of the things that I do and what my rationale is. Obviously, in the morning, I drink my hydrogen water. I get really well hydrated. Once that happens, you know, and, and I wait 15, 20 minutes, I make, and maybe more <laughs> because it takes me a while to make my smoothie. I make a smoothie that has a tons of fruits and vegetables, and I have some, like, chia seeds in there and I'll have I'll, I'll have different stuff I have other videos that, that show my smoothies you can check them out if you want so I make this smoothie it's stuff that I would never be able to eat I'm not going to be able to sit down and have a pile of vegetables and fruits I, I just won't be able to do it and one of the latest researches from Japan that's really fascinating about this is actually that when you eat vegetables in the morning now they're proving in Japan they haven't I haven't seen this research in America yet that it helps regulate your blood sugar all day long. You don't have spikes. This is huge. I think the study had to do something with diabetes, but this is huge because everything that you eat throughout the day is now all of a sudden gonna be affected by what you ate first thing in the morning. And so that's why I make these smoothies. I know the juicing's great. I know juicing's great. I'm not gonna knock it. It's just that the way I'm thinking is that these fibers, the way that nature creates the whole food form, the skin, the fiber in it, you know, the juice, the water in it, and just everything in it, the enzymes in it, the minerals in it, you know, every, the whole food itself. And that's why smoothies is something that I've chosen. I've done a lot of juicing and I still enjoy it, you know, time to time, but it's a lot of work and it's more expensive. And so that's why I've gone with the smoothies and it just made more sense to me. After I have my smoothie, you know, I give myself time. I'm pretty content after that. And if for some crazy reason I'm not content and I want to be 
bad if you want to call it bad like my idea of bad is I'll take something like a really healthy piece of bread like Dave's killer bread if you've ever heard of it not research it and I'll put it in the toaster and you know I'll toast this piece of bread and I'll put something like almond butter on it or you can put sunflower butter you know some non-dairy you know no sugar no added salt none of this stuff just this nut butter and I'll put some coconut cream this is kind of like what I feel like is a dessert, like having pancakes or something. And then I'll put a sprinkle of raw cacao on it. And then maybe if I want to, I'll put some raw honey on it. And I'll eat this piece of this piece of bread with all this stuff on it. And it's actually sometimes really tough to eat. I'll cut it in half sometimes and I'll have the other half later. But I'll do something like that and I'll be good for a long time. And that smoothie that I make later on throughout the day, if I get hungry again, I usually have quite a bit extra. And so then I'll drink more of it throughout the day. And I pretty much do that because I know I'm getting a tons of vegetables. I'm getting tons of fruit. I'm getting more than I would ever be able to eat. And of course I throw stuff on top of the smoothie that makes me chew. I'll put like hemp hearts or different things that I get nuts or different things that I have to chew because chewing is so important for the digestive system to begin because the digestion really begins in the mouth. And so I'll do something like this. It's easy right? I mean, it, re it only takes 10 minutes to make a smoothie. It's really not that hard. And so I'll do this and I'll literally wait till around 5 p.m. ish, 6 p.m. I don't like to go as late as 7 p.m. So five or six, that's when I have my dinner. And I always have a large amount of vegetables. You know, I usually like a large amount of spinach. I'll have like these raw peppers. I, I put a lot of carrots in my salad. I'll put lots of live probiotics because again this goes on with the whole theme of the gut bacteria i'll use sauerkraut i'll use kimchi i'll do different stuff like that and i'll just make this salad and then i'll put some type of like natto which is a type of fermented bean again fermentation more bacteria there's a ton of research about natto in japan it's crazy healthy for you if you haven't heard of it i believe it's spelled n-a-t-t-o it's crazy what it can do for you. And, and I'll just make this type of salad and of course have either a little rice, quinoa, brown rice, some type of carbohydrate mixed with a large amount of vegetables. And if I ever feel like my body's really needy, it just really needs something extra like protein, but I, of course I don't really wanna put like meat or fish or any of these things that I just believe have bad bacteria that are eventually gonna be bad for us, I'll take an egg and I'll boil it. So I'll boil an egg and I'll put it in there. I don't eat a lot of eggs, but periodically I'll do that and I'll put some Himalayan salt on there. And I'll eat this and it feels great. And if I ever feel like I want something sweet, because that happens, I got a sweet tooth. If I ever feel like I want something sweet at the end of the meal, cut up like a pear or an apple or a pineapple, some sweet fruit and a small little portion and that really kills that last bit of sweet tooth that I have and then I'm good and I won't eat the rest of the night I'll let my body rest when I finally get to sleep so these type of tips I hope are helpful to people out there who are you know trying to get healthy but want something simple especially when science doesn't necessarily understand everything and so I hope you guys found this helpful again don't forget to subscribe uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you're enjoying the videos and We'll see you on our next time. I'll see you on the next video next time. Something like that. Okay.